Hello. Um, <laughs> trying to be. So today we meet in the virtual world, but I would still like to acknowledge uh, that the Art Gallery of Ontario operates on land that is the territory of the Anishinaabe Mississauga Nation and was also the territory of the Wendat and Haudenosaunee. The Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant is an agreement between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Anishinaabe Three Fires Confederacy to for the resources around the Great Lakes. Thank you. And um, my guest today, or our guest today, Alyssa Bistanath, is a, a, she calls a lens-based practitioner uh, whose work focuses on the themes of memory and belonging. The daughter of Guyanese immigrants, Vistanath endeavors to look at modes of representation by investigating nostalgia, exploring evidence, and interrupting the archive. Um, we're going to look at uh, some uh, great examples of uh, and discuss uh, her work, but um, um, I thought maybe I'd just start by asking um, uh, the uh, I, 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 there was a comment from you uh, earlier and you said, uh, um, you know, I don't consider myself an artist or something like that. And um, I, th I always think these things are kind of humorous because to me, of course, you're an artist. Um, but then I think of a term like lens based and I, I always think we don't really use that term in normal speech, um, even though it's a good term. So do you want to uh, discuss, do you want to talk about, um, you know, uh, what you do call yourself and what you don't call yourself. I mean, it's, it's weird for people to ask you to identify like what it is you do when like, I would normally say I'm a photographer if someone asked me what I do. Um, and the majority of the work that I do is actually commercial photography or documentary. So uh, that doesn't really fall within the contemporary art frame. Um, I switched over a lens based in my official bio because I started shooting video. And um, while I started in video, it was my first medium. Um, I stepped away from it for about a decade. So stepping back into it, uh, lens based, uh, I don't know, maybe that's uh, my, my gallery TPW uh, speak coming to me. But uh, as we know, photography is expanding. Um, the image is expanding. What is considered photography is expanding. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say photography most of the time. Um, uh, the artist comment isn't disparaging against artists. Uh, I just maybe feel a little bit shy about that uh, term. Um, it's very loaded. Yeah. Really, yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, I, uh, I was really taken by, um, as many people were, I think, the article in Canadian Art um, by Michelle Pearson. Clark, um, where she showed a, a number of examples of your um, isolation photographs, as, as I've been calling them, but I guess uh, social distancing photographs maybe makes more sense because they're not all about isolation. Um, before we look at some of those, do you want to say anything in general about what inspired uh, or what motivated that work? Um, I mean, uh, if you haven't, if whoever's watching hasn't read the article, um, the context is that the photographs are um, majority photographs of my friends. Um, and later they became uh, photographs of my family as, as things kind of opened up. But um, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, my friends are all within walking distance. I live in downtown Toronto. So um, being able to get out once or twice a week during lockdown and just see their faces was really just good for me personally. Uh, it was good for them. and. Um, yeah, the practice of walking and taking photographs was sort of a meditative uh, practice during that time. Um, so that's how it came about. Um, it was more of using the camera to sort of heal the panic, I think, that we were all feeling at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we try to <laughs> bring some photos up? Sure. Hopefully I, I won't have any issues here. So okay. I'm just going to go to... And uh, um, all right. So I absolutely um, I love this photograph, and I love the kind of 
you know, it's very, in some ways very simple, but it's a, um, it's also a big mystery to me. Like, is it just a trick of the camera or are they in a huge building? Like, is that a warehouse or is that? Uh, yes. So those are my friends, uh, Ellen and Tamira, and they live in a, a very, uh, a renovated um, industrial building. So that's their front window. Um, I'm very familiar with the space. I often house it for them when they're away. Um, and so they're in a very um, big building and then the white sort of clouds are reflected from behind me. Um, and that's what's framing them up uh, on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, a 70s or 80s uh, album cover or something. <laughs> you know, kind of, you know. I think they would appreciate that. Um, so. Yeah. This was a, a two days after they got back from Italy. So um, it was my first time seeing them since the pandemic had started. And um, yeah. So they were quarantining on top of the quarantine then? Or? Yeah, exactly. They were self-isolating yeah. at that time. All right, self-isolating. And um, um, OK, so let's just see if we can get to the, aha. So um, this, this we used for promotion was the kind of lead photograph. Um, and uh, this is, um, I mean, this, I find this very interesting because uh, on the one hand, um, because you tell me a little bit about, you know, that this is your friend and I have some context of who and where you're photographing, I start to kind of fill in information that's probably not there. Like I, <laughs> like, well, I'm working on a couple of projects right now that involve orphan photographs, right? Um, where we really don't know very much about them at all. And that's like a whole other kind of um, intellectual and emotional experience. And this could be that, I mean, it's not because uh, you've given us some information, um, but not, not entirely. Like I'm sort of looking at it going, well, I guess it's a building south of St. Clair, somewhere between Bathurst and Ronsi. But it could just also be, if I didn't know what you told me, it could be in Cleveland or Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Like there's something, very general, like very universal about it, and then something very, very specific about the content too, because it's, uh, you know, you ph photographing the people who are nearest and dearest to you. Right. You're not, you're not uh, far off. It's north of St. Clair at Christie. So yeah, it's, it's sort of one of those buildings, but um, Hazel's definitely not an orphan. If she is, she's my <laughs> orphan. <laughs> Uh, she's one of my best friends. Uh, we work a lot on um, projects together. And so photographing her was, um, she was actually the first person I photographed in this series. Um, mm -hmm. She's the person who has visited me the most during lockdown. She comes and sits on my front steps and I open the door and sit inside and we chat. Um, and so taking this photograph was actually really simple because we understand each other um, through visual language. And so she knows the photograph that she's setting up. I know the photograph that I'm setting up and we kind of trust each other. So in a lot of ways, that's a collaboration, um, at her being a visual artist herself. So um, yeah, this was like maybe the first week of uh, lockdown. And um, you know, this um, is a basement apartment that she was living in at the time. She's since then moved. But um, yeah, like I, I also live in a basement apartment, so I know what it's like to sort of be experiencing lockdown during the winter um, when there's no light and um, each of us li live by ourselves. So it was kind of like this communication. And then I walked back down to my place and we got on video chat and we talked about um, the process, um, but we didn't really have the opportunity to chat when I was taking the photograph because her um, windows weren't opening. Right. So. Yeah. Um, so you said you, you took it in the first week and a lot of them seem to be in the ones that I've seen it were taken in the first month or so. Are you uh, continuing to um, uh, take, you know, social distancing photographs? Uh, yes. Yeah. I. It's kind of one of those things. It's when I started taking pictures about 20 years ago when I first moved to the city for university. Uh, I would carry my camera around with me everywhere, but gradually you just stop because your camera becomes more expensive and you become more lazy. But uh, since the pandemic started, I've been taking my camera pretty much everywhere. And so I continue to take pictures as the pandemic sort of evolves into, um, as we edge closer to norm normalcy, as um, 
a lot of people would think it, but uh, the landscape is still quite foreign, I think, um, as we move through. Mm -hmm. um, and do you, uh, you shoot on film mostly? or? I actually shoot all digital. So um, I think I, when I started my career as a photographer, I shot maybe one or two uh, commercial assignments on slide film and then uh, they started asking for digital. So I pretty much shoot all on uh, digital. Right, I don't know why I, I thought otherwise. But, uh, yeah. It just means that my density is good and that's kind of a compliment, so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, this is a remarkable photograph. Um, so uh, let's see what happens here. There we go. Um, so then this is a photograph that sort of, I, I, I can't make up a story in my head about, well, I can, but I, I mean, uh, this is where it is. This is definitely Christie station it's not in another city um i might be able to guess that it's like june or july because of the sky which is incredible um but um it could be if it was later in the night then it would be not unusual to have so few people but i imagine that you, you took it at i'm just making this up <laughs> so that you took it um at uh you know seven or eight o'clock at night and so christy would normally be a lot a lot busier than that. This is also the first week of the pandemic. Uh -huh. So um, I think it was maybe March 20th. Um, and I had been riding the subway every day to get back and forward to Ryerson. Um, and it seemed weird to me that I hadn't been on the subway for multiple weeks at that point. Um, and yeah, it would be more busy. What captured my interest in, um, in this particular photograph is that the woman and the man on the left there are wearing masks. And it was the first time that I had seen someone coming up from the subway in a mask. Um, and they had like suitcases and stuff. So I was, I was curious as to where they were going. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really cold. Like I was freezing when I took this photograph. Um, but. Yeah, it's a, uh, I think for a lot of people, like, you know, every station has its stories, but for me, Christie is, uh, because it's at Christie Pitts and um, um, just has, is connected to so much kind of, you know, meaningful history in Toronto. And I guess there's some stations that are just more generic, uh, um, not generic, but you know what I mean? They're, uh, <laughs> they're not, not connected to like, you know, riots and so forth. And right. so, yeah. um, so. No, it's special <laughs> to me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I haven't, I, I lived near Manning years ago, so I was never, uh, so I was a station away, um, but, uh, 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 yeah, it's been, so, um, so let's see here, what happens, oh yeah, um, uh, when when did you take this photograph because i'm wondering i don't even know when our when this identity became like part of our city it just did one day for me <laughs> um this is later this is maybe a couple of weeks after um this is uh fiesta farms mm -hmm. um and it was the first time that i had seen signage in the grocery store it was the first time i had to line up uh, for groceries and go through this sort of um, airport security type of questionnaire to get into the grocery store. Uh, they made me leave my backpack outside. Like it was a really, um, it really was an in intense experience. And uh, I, I didn't want to photograph any single person in the grocery store just for, for their own privacy. But um, I just thought it was, it was quite striking at the time that that was the new norm. So these signs were everywhere, like every six feet in the whole entire grocery store. Like they, Fiesta Farms did a really good job of um, managing the crowds. Um, they did end up having to close uh, very briefly during the pandemic, but mm. um, this grocery store ser serves like a pretty wide community. Um, and so, uh, yeah, like there's two ha homes for the elderly, like very close by. Um, so it's a very important like uh, center point for our community. Mm -hmm. I wonder if people will, uh, I can't say for sure that I recognize the floor. 
but once I knew it was Fiesta Farms, uh, oh yeah, of course, that looks very familiar to me. Yeah. So probably will will be for a lot of people. Um, Um, so this is called Dufferin, and I have to admit I didn't, uh, not that I like worked overtime, <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying to figure things out here, but this I, I sat with for a long time and uh, was even tempted to go to Dufferin. I mean, I assume it's at Dufferin Station, or is it just on Dufferin Street? Uh, it's Dufferin north of DuPont. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, it's the same day that I photographed Alan Tamira, which was the first photograph. And it's the photograph that I took after um, that one. And it just occurred to me that they were caged <laughs> up in their place. And um, these are the reflections from the, one of the, um, the bridges for the train uh, mm -hmm. that runs along DuPont. And uh, yeah, it just struck me how, how confined we, we are. So I often pair those two pictures together. Um, it does mm -hmm. give me some sort of feeling of confinement. Now I have to go check it. Check it out. Yeah. Right. It's, a ma right. it's a magic hour. It casts beautiful shadows. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, but in a way, um, so I chose a couple of those uh, because. Uh, what you seem to, let's see here, there we go. Um, this is, uh, I don't overuse the word. I like to, actually, I like to overuse the word masterpiece just for fun. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> such an incredible photo. Um, and, um, and again, you've, you've told us uh, that this is your friend, uh, Melissa, and presumably her family. And uh, it's such a, um, I mean, I can, I can uh, enjoy, enjoy the reflections in the glass and just the kind of, you know, the formal properties of this. Um, but it's also interesting to me because it's like, uh, if, it, if it wasn't the pandemic and they were, like I'm always interested in these photographs of people looking, what kind of facial expressions are there? Like, can they, are they inside? Can they go outside? Are they, are they, are they kind of stuck inside? Is it, uh, um, you know, or, or could this, if, if it had been a found photograph, it's like, are they watching the Santa Claus parade or something? Or is, is it, um, is it from, you know, the birds and they're watching uh, <laughs> it's not film and they're about to watch yeah. the gas, gas station explode or something? Um, I don't know. There's a lot, a lot uh, uh, that comes to mind. But in fact, there is a real story and it's here. This is the, um, the photograph that I took after Hazel's, um, after I went home and video chatted her, I went back out and photographed Melissa, who also lives in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, Melissa is my emergency contact. She's, she's just like a good friend. She's like the person who will come and pick you up from the hospital when you've injured yourself. Um, and these are her, this is her family. This is Dave and Penny and Francis, um, who are all probably watching. So hi, guys. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been photographing Melissa um, and her family since before uh, the children were born. Um, they're very used to me photographing them. Uh, they, uh, they knew that I was coming and so like the kids were kind of excited, I guess. And after this photograph, they did open their door and I did move back to the sidewalk and we, we ended up having a bit of a chat. But um, I think that I was their first friend visit during the pandemic. Like they hadn't seen anybody. Um, and this was the first time that they were seeing like a familiar face since it started. That wasn't like on Zoom or, um, yeah. A lot of these pictures are people seeing like their friend's face in real life for the first time uh, since the pandemic started. So. Um, you mentioned that you started photographing about 20 years ago and it occurs to me, that's probably exactly the moment where everybody's photographing. Um, uh, in, in other words, um, during this, people are, you know, people, uh, I'm, I'm not very comfortable right now in Zoom, but in general, people are, are um, you know, comfortable being on camera. People are comfortable posing for people or, you know, whereas that would have been a real, um, a real setup, you know, like even 30 years ago or something, it would have been, people I think would have been a lot less comfortable than they are now. Um, 
it's hard to know for sure, but. Um, I mean, I'm terribly uncomfortable in front of the camera. Like I don't like having my picture taken, um, but this group of people, I, they're never not having their picture taken by me. So I think it's just a comfort between the, the two of us or the group of us. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I, I think I got my first phone that could take pictures maybe 15 years ago. And that's kind of when it changed for me, but mm. um, yeah. When we stopped using our phones as phones really and started, you know, right. mainly, you know. Using them as cameras or calculators. Yeah. The front apps that are, they're called phones, but that's an app. <laughs> right. Whereas the camera seems to be a fairly universal one. Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway. So this one, there's something, uh, uh, something really good happened here, which is that um, I lost my notes about what this photograph is. So I'm just, uh, although it does look like, you know, Manning or like, I kind of recognize this, you know, that kind of architecture on that kind of street. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I don't, I, I, I forgot, or I don't know <laughs> what it's about. So you, no one has to hear me. Uh, <laughs> speculate. <laughs> speculate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I won't tell you what, exactly what street it is on because of, uh, you know, safety and stuff. But um, this is uh, my best friend, uh, Emily. We've been friends since I was 15. Um, so that's well over 20 years. Um, but yeah, this is her and her daughter and her husband, John, and they're probably watching too. So hi, guys. Um, and this is the picture that I took right before I went to Fiesta Farms. Um, so in a way, they're all kind of interconnected. But um, Sabine, who is a uh, little girl in the picture, is actually the last person that I like hugged before the pandemic started. And uh, it would be months before I would be able to like hug anybody ever again. But uh, I have quite a special uh, place in my heart for her. So. Um, she was showing me something, but there was like a big wind bluster at that point, and um, she was just enjoying the cool air. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it, it poured like right after this, but uh, Johnny's looking at the clouds, deciding whether I should leave for Fiesta Farms sooner rather than later, and I don't know. But uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time with this family in particular. Um, Did you, in, uh, in photograph of people, um, have you noticed uh, any any mood trends? Like, so there's something about these ones from the beginning where there's people are like open and curious, maybe, you know, there's probably lots of things going on that we don't see in the photographs. But um, as people are more and more um, uh, penned up or kind of, you know, angry, angry at each other for one, you know, for wearing masks or not wearing masks or whatever. Have you, have you, have you detected any of that in, in the photographing people? Um, I mean, with this particular family, um, like I've photographed them multiple times since the pandemic started. So that's one of the things about this series that I really like is going back to the same spots and photographing as, them as they change. Um, I, th I think the thing that I've noticed a lot is that kids are really resilient. Like maybe the pandemic was really like tough for them at the beginning, but then it becomes the new normal. And um, like my brother just sent me a picture of my two year old niece wearing a mask and like, like, like nothing is amiss, you know? And I'm, I'm like, how did you get her to wear that? And she's just like, she just did it. And um, yeah, I think that people are tiring of the concept of safety that we've built for ourselves around this time, but um, I don't know. I, I happen to be friends and family with a group of people who are very conscious of how their behavior affects other people. And so they've been pretty conscientious about wearing masks, keeping social distancing, like obeying the quote unquote rules. Like they're not really interested in a moment of um, fun at the expense of like another person. So. Um, mm -hmm. 
it, I, I think it, they've been pretty consistent. All right. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, I think there's a lot of people like that in Toronto, fortunately. Um, yeah. and, and now we'll have our, our, I think our first real test will be, you know, around schools, but right. see, what, see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's really painful to watch the news and, and see people protesting wearing masks. Um, it's such a simple thing for uh, so much benefit, so. Yeah, I'm happy to live where I live. I love this city, so. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, let's see here. Well, this is, uh, this is Michelle um, uh, Pearson Clark. So um, uh, this is also, again, I don't have a whole lot to say about this, except uh, I just, uh, you know, I love this photo. It makes me feel very, it does make me feel very uh, grounded in my city, but then also um, this uh, multi-talented individual um, who's done so much um, in, uh, in and around, you know, the world I live in uh, in, in the last few years. And it was, it was such a, uh, I get a lot of a, a joy out of this photograph. And yeah. she was, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> um, you uh, and you met at school, like at Ryerson, I take it, or, or uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Michelle is the first uh, Caribbean artist that I met, um, which was pretty late in my life. I was in my mid thirties, um, so immediately I was very. Um, just taken with her and um, she's become a good friend since then. And, uh, you know, um, taking this picture, I called her up and asked her if she wanted uh, just to see each other's faces and she was game, you know, and she, she, she does these kind of things with good humor. And I, I shared the pictures with her um, pretty early on in the pandemic. And mm -hmm. um, she was like, if you want to like get them published, like, let me know. And I was like, I don't know, <laughs> but uh no, I, I like this picture because I, I was an hour late to, to for our little window visit and she had supper on the table. And so whenever I see the picture, I think to myself, like, she's just waiting to go and eat her dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm, you know, out there just smiling goofily at her. And, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a few of them where she's smiling back at me, but I like, I particularly like this one. All right. What time of year was this taken? Uh, this is in March. In March as well. Yeah. So very fruitful month. It's good light. Good light then. It really shows up in the photographs. I love the reflection of the tree in the window here. Yeah. Windows yeah. just are, lend themselves to, to really complex and layered images. So um, that's an interesting part of this project for sure. stuck on Michelle. Oh, there, okay. oh, there we go. Oh. Um, so now we're in Guyana, um, which, uh, and I've never been there, so I have no, again, no speculations about what's going on outside of what you told me. Um, um, have you spent a lot of time there? Or did, did, did you? I actually had never been there um, until I was in grad school. Um, I started grad school in 2015. So I, I had been, um, working as a freelance photographer for about 10 years between my two degrees and uh, had traveled pretty extensively, but I had never been to Guyana. So this particular photograph was taken during my first trip there. And so I've only ever been twice and I went there to shoot a documentary. So this was during um, the scouting and I was with my mom and dad. And this is my auntie actually, this is my mom's aunt. And um, yeah, seeing Guyana through their lens was something that I'll never forget. It was um, such an incredible learning experience and an intimate experience between um, my parents and myself. So um, my, my auntie passed um, just recently um, in the last couple of years. So this was one of the last pictures that I took of her actually. Uh -huh. um, are there, uh, do you feel there's any, any uh, comparisons between um, uh, or contrast between, you know, photographing in Toronto um, 
a city you're intimately familiar with and then and then being you know here being familiar i guess through other people's eyes um i mean i talk about this 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 picture is actually from an article that appears in broadview presently um mm -hmm. broadview magazine and i talk a lot about this particular thing but it's just like toronto is my home like i've lived i moved here when i was 18 and i've lived here for you know 20 years and it is the place that i consider to be my home but Guyana is my homeland. It's like the place that um, the mythology of of why I might be the way that I am comes from. It, it's the it's where my parents were born. It's where they grew up. It's why I speak a certain way. It's why I like certain types of sugar. Like there's like so many things that come from this place. And so um, going there and actually putting picture to sort of this like inherited generational memory was um, a, a quite a different experience from for discovering for Toronto through the lens from the moment I landed here. And so um, in, in my like uh, media making in Guyana, I think I was really searching for that myth. And so um, really looking for a specific narrative that I had built up in my head. Um, but then there are moments like these where, you know, we're just sitting um, at a family member's house and you just see this woman that you've grown up with uh, standing so tall and I don't know, it just captures me. Yeah, they're really special. Um, and just a few more from Diana, I don't sure. um, um it's funny, this window I'm in here, I don't get to see the chat. So if there's any questions, I don't know about it. Uh, so we'll try uh, and get, well, do you see anything? I, I don't see any questions. Good. I mean, not good that there aren't questions, <laughs> good that we're not missing them. Yeah. So, um, was this someone you knew or just someone? So my dad um, was a teacher in Guyana and mm -hmm. um, he had run into this uh, individual early in our earlier on when we were on our trip, and it's a former student of his, and his name is George, um, and he happened to be biking by and saw us through the car and was happy to see us again in such a short period of time. So he reached out, um, but I just thought it was really interesting um, that he would remember my dad even after all these years. It's been quite a long time, so. Yeah, I just like the expression on his face and sort of the gentleness of his posture. Let me know. <clears throat> so this to me is like, if I knew anything about uh, Guyana, this is like the Christie station of the, <laughs> the photographs that there's no mistaking where it is. And right. uh, it looks like the kind of restaurant I would really uh, want to. <laughs> want to spend time in. So, so the building uh, that you're looking at is actually, um, oh, I'm going to get this wrong. It's uh, a house and a restaurant that belonged to a relative of my mother's. So I think her cousin's family. Um, and it was quite close by to the uh, Chinese bakery that my family owned in Guyana. Um, and so like, these places are pretty close together. But I thought that it was really interesting um, to look at Guyana as a multi-ethnic place. Um, there are many ethnicities that have been there for since the, um, the project that, the colonial project that Guyana is. And so this project, this photograph actually reflects um, Chinese migration to Guyana presently. And mm. um, the uh, Chinese uh, immigrants that belonged to the indentured uh, group that came over in the mid 1800s. Um, so I actually don't know whether these girls on the left are from one group or the other. Um, and this gentleman um, is, a, is a, a Muslim gentleman. And so I just, I liked the, the play between past and present and uh, sort of the diversity of a country like Guyana, because you would never think um, that countries in South America are multi-ethnic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, which is uh, our own, 
I, it's a it's a bias maybe to be to be generous to us is partly because we're we're so multi ethnic and so diverse. Uh, right. But um, but yeah, every time I travel somewhere or encounter you know some project like this uh, or you know, anything that opens my eyes up is always uh, a reminder that. Uh, Every country has history, <laughs> and uh, um, it's not, uh, you know. I mean, it's a country of cousins. I love going there because everyone looks like me, and it's very comforting. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> yeah, great. And then, so um, this uh, this is the well second last. We have a little coda after this, but. Um, I, uh, this is something you produced um, for Fotorama. Yes. Uh, which is the gallery TPW's uh, f annual fundraiser. Um, and I, I just, I mean, I liked it a lot, but um, especially that you, in the, in the caption for it, you said, check up on your friends, y'all. Um, but this is in 2019, so. Yeah. Not that we shouldn't have been checking up on our friends, <laughs> but it's, a, it's interesting that that was the, the caption, um, and uh, then we would you know, move into an era of, of uh, and your work would become, you know, very, very uh, deliberately about checking up on your friends. So that was great. Um, yeah, it, it, it bears mentioning that um, I made this piece with Hiba Abdallah, who's a great artist and who's probably watching. So hi, Hiba. Um, yeah, we made this piece together. It was our one of many collaborations that we've made. Um, the other text that we photographed in this way, so it's a projection on a wall that we photographed and then printed and then laid uh, vinyl over. But um, the other word piece that we made uh, was everything is more or less disappointing. <laughs> and we ended up choosing this one. But uh, when you know the pandemic hit, Heba sent me the second one and I was like, they're both true. <laughs> like, um, but, I like this piece because I think it symbolizes um, a lot of the friendships that I have. We check in on each other quite often and I'll often get a text from Hibbo, pandemic or otherwise, saying like, are you okay? For no reason, like there's no reason to suspect that I'm not okay, but she just wants to know and I think that's quite sweet. Yeah, that's so. great, that's very, um, very moving. Um, so uh, that's one, one last photo, but we, we don't need to comment on it. It just sort of takes us out of here. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, comments you'd like to make before we sign off? Anything that didn't come up? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, thanks for being interested in my photographs. It's, you know, um, it's, it's a privilege to be interviewed by you. I've, I've known about you for many years. So thank you. Thanks for asking. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Thank you to all my friends and family who participated in this project. I, I love them. I love you guys so much. All right, so, um, and then on that note, thank you everyone for putting up with my clunky, there we go, so. <laughs> um, and I don't even remember where that's from or what, but I just. It's my front door, I'm, I'm a bit of a ham, so. It's your, oh. uh, yeah, it's for my friends who could, were walking by during the pandemic and couldn't knock on it at the time, so. Well, that's great. Yeah. Very nice, so I'm glad I chose chose it as the last image then so um well thank you very much and Thanks, uh be um watching your next uh creative moves and um and uh thank you for bringing this work into the world thanks, thanks jim appreciate it appreciate your time too likewise Thanks. <laughs>